We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Welcome to Pod Maverick After Dark. I am Kirk Henderson, and you are joined by myself and Josh Bow. It is February 3rd, Saturday night, about 10.30. Dallas Mavericks just lost to the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, second time this season. Game closed out with a final score of 129 to 117. Josh, how you doing? Whew, I'm doing okay. I have a f- I'm trying to think of how we're going to talk about this game because... The vibes feel very similar to when the Mavericks lost those two games back-to-back to to the Hornets last season. Uh. Those losses dropped them under 500, and basically we knew that the the season was over. Um, This is interesting because they're 26 and 23. They're still 30 or whatever. I think they got like 35 or so games left to play. It's not over, but it just... I feel like whatever, you know, there are a lot of reasons why we'll get into it, but it felt like a breaking point for a lot of people that I think we're kind of holding on um, some, some optimism about where this team could go. Uh, Well, similar to the Mavericks three point shooting, your camera died. Um, (laughs) So you work on that while I kind of ramble in response. Um, I find that that sort of lead in very interesting because I don't know what I expected out of this game because Giannis Antetokounmpo is one of the players I probably have the most fear and respect for on a game-to-game basis. So when you're playing the Bucs, even with days of rest, once you know Derek Lively's out of the game, once you know Kyrie's, you know, I mean, Kyrie's just, I'm sure he'll play the next game at this point. Uh, but if Kyrie's not playing, you know, you're still just missing three of your five regular starters. I don't have a lot of high expectations for this game. So when the Mavericks come out, and it's funny, I could not find the game on my ridiculous streaming service that I have. So I missed the seven of eight three point barrage. <laughs> so you missed the best the part of the game for the Mavericks. Yeah. So I missed like this best, and like the Mavs slack is blowing up about the game. And of course, it's just like, all right, cool. I'm gonna, I, and then the moment I tune in, I mean, within minutes, like probably not even minutes, it might have been 30 seconds later, Luka Doncic uh, and, and Giannis got in that little scrum on the floor where Luka displayed remarkable flexibility. Um, I just want to point that out and rolled his ankle in such a way to where I remember thinking, oh, OK, there's the season. Good thing <laughs> that that Knicks pick is top 10 protected. Yeah, and it then, looked of course, awful. Like, it it was, was, I mean, it was it as bad. gross of an injury that didn't actually. I mean, he probably he has a sprained ankle, but some people just have pliable ankles like that. Um, it was one of the grossest things that didn't actually hurt a player that I've ever seen. 
Uh, and then he comes back in and proceeds to sort of go to, you know, just really play a spectacular offensive quarter and, and half. Um, it does it does bear mentioning, though, that he does not play defense sometimes. And tonight was one of those games where for stretches of game, like there was a, he got beat on a backdoor cut. <laughs> to the room for a dunk where he didn't move <laughs> yeah he was definitely cons- i mean the he definitely like his ankle was still like a thing like it's not like he came back and that necessarily mean he was totally fine he was just fine enough to get back into the game but you could tell like he was like okay i'm just gonna save what i have well tonight. his defense on, picked on up defense. as the game went on yeah like the defense maybe, it loose- maybe he loosened up the ankle a little yeah bit or something yeah yeah so i mean that was that was definitely something um but, and then, yeah. you know, like, I mean, things like things didn't go to hell. And like, this is just how would you describe that last two minutes? Because my problem last two minutes these, of the game or the last no, two minutes of, of, of the, the second quarter where the Bucks went on a 15 0 run in the final two minutes of a quarter. Uh, <laughs> it was bad. And, but I but mean, who what happened? Because uh, you got to understand, like, I'm writing. My wife is talking <laughs> to me. I'm like waiting to eat my dinner at halftime. And I look up and I'm just like, <laughs> what? And then I, I, I I'm scrolling through the play by play. And I noticed the same thing I always noticed, that Jason Kidd didn't call fucking timeout. But that that feels very reductive to what happened. Can, can you kind of tell me what happened? Uh, well, you know, the offense tried up in terms of mysteries. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I can go on a longer soliloquy, but, oh, God, I can't even say that word. Soliloquy. Yeah, that's tough for me right now. Sorry, guys. Um, I mean, short, long story short, uh, mysteries and turnovers. And then... When you have mysteries and turnovers with this this version of Mavericks transition defense, which might be uh. one of the worst transition defenses in the entire NBA, uh, and when you give Giannis and Dame, you know, free cracks at this transition defense, I mean, it was it was there was nothing to do. Um, you know, Luca had uh, you know he missed a shot. He thought he got fouled, and in that, you know, not only does he miss a shot, which led to a transition opportunity. And of course, you know, he thought he got fouled. We can argue ref stuff. We can bring, we can talk about that later. Cause I know a lot of people are mad about the refs uh, and in some cases, rightly so. But so it leads to, you know, not only is it a missed shot, it leads to a fast break opportunity where Luca gets a transition take foul on Giannis. Cause if he didn't, I mean, because Giannis was about to, but to have a, like a free throw line dunk, like he was about to obliterate the rim because no one was getting back. Uh, and then he picks up a technical. So that's, what, that's two free throws, one for the technical, one for the transition take foul. Then they get the three pointer on the possession that they keep. So that's um, that's five points in one possession. And of course, that's the three pointer they make where Giannis Antetokounmpo uh, basically kicked Luca as he was driving baseline and passing it to the corner three, which they reviewed and called incidental contact, which was a bad call. You think it was t- like I, 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 I Luca I, sold it. Like that looked yeah. like somebody. You know when they uh, when when. Uh... The like Stone Cold used to kick per pe- somebody in the stomach. The stunner, before he did the stunner. The stun- <laughs> That's what that kick was. <laughs> yeah, I mean it wasn't great, but like it was still clear. Uh, and then maybe Luca did sell it. I thought what they should have called, you know, they should have taken away the three, but maybe just called a normal foul. Like there were some people wondering if it was like a hostile act. I was like, no, but maybe like just call an offensive foul and take away the made three. So, but that doesn't happen. And then the Mavericks come back with their next possession. Luca misses a shot, and then Giannis shows a three uh, at the buzzer. So they scored in 29 seconds. They scored eight points. Um, so that's how you lose 25 point leads uh, in a hurry. So uh, if you want to go further, I mean, this game was the just personification of this Mavericks team, like top to bottom. Obviously, the injuries make things worse. Maybe you know this isn't maybe the best version of this Mavericks team, but stylistically like their strengths and weaknesses. I mean, they were on full display tonight. Like you get the nine of 11 start from three. They look awesome. And the Bucks scored 20 points in the first quarter. And you talked with uh, Mavs.com, Bobby Corral on a really good podcast. And y'all basically talked about, went through the numbers. When the Mavericks get to execute the things that they like to execute defensively, they're very good. Like I remember Bobby talking about when they get to ice the pick and roll, uh, when they get to switch and defend in isolation, they're like, both of those things are one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. The thing about that is you can only do that in a half-court offense. 
and oh there goes my camera again sorry this is, this is good let me this just is, keep talking if it keeps this is emblematic of of the maverick season um the best part is josh knows he needs to replace his camera he just, he just won't actually replace his camera it's my favorite part about this right in the middle of what i'm talking about too it's okay so, yeah it sounded good they start nine of 11 from three and uh and their defense looks amazing, like I said, because they can execute their half court sure. defensive principles. Uh, and they can't do that when they're missing, and you can't execute your half court defense when you're missing a ton of threes and you're turning the ball over a ton. The Mavericks mm-hmm. had eight, what is it, 18 turnovers tonight? That, the turnovers tonight. 21, 21 turnovers. They're not a turnover most. prone no. team. And yeah, some so of the all. turnovers they had tonight were just crushing. Yeah. Yeah, so 21 turnovers after the 9 of 11 from three start. They finish 7 of 28. Um, So they miss 21 three-pointers to finish the game, making only seven. Um, And the Bucs scored uh, 25 points off turnovers, and they scored 19 fast break points, 64 points in the paint. So basically after that 9 of 11 start, the Mavericks threes dried up. The Bucs rotations got a little bit better. Uh, I think Luca's three pointer suffered after the ankle injury because he was a little he, he was looking a little hot at the start of the game, and then I think that ankle injury kind of made those threes a, a little harder to make. But well, I mean, he's but, been but guarded by Giannis. And yeah, I know that's, that's the secondary the part of this. Whereas, yeah. like, there were a couple of times in that game where he sought out Giannis, which I love because I actually think he he kind of kicks Giannis's ass. But Giannis gets a great whistle against Luca. Like there was one tip in towards the end when the game was kind of already done, the Derek Jones Jr. one, where he gets he gets Giannis on his back hip. Giannis fouls the shit out of him, no call, and then he just goes over to the refs like my like my eight year old, seven year old child does, and is like, mm. and it's like, dude, just you're not going to get all the calls against a former a former defensive player of the year. I get it. Yeah, it's yeah, that's not great. And something about the Mavericks. Um... I've been thinking like their transition defense is just so bad. I wonder how much of it is Luca's in the paint a lot, even when he's not shooting, because when he's creating three pointers, he's creating three pointers because he's touching the paint usually uh, either in a pick and roll or a drive. Um, Obviously missed three pointers are bad. And we know that if your floor is space where you've got two guys in the corner and you miss a three and that ball is, is shooting out to the, to the top of the key and you've got two people in the corner hard to get back on defense well the Mavericks always have two people in the corner and also Luca's in the paint so think about when he's shooting when he's passing the ball to people at the three-point line the Mavericks have two guys in the corner and Luca's Uh probably somewhere in the paint if that's a missed shot going up the top of the wing the Mavericks are basically down if they're not getting back as as fast as possible they're basically three man down almost every single transition opportunity that that was one of the because there's two guys in the corner and Luca's in the paint passing the ball out to a shooter so that, that's uh, they've got to, and that's a systematic thing. But that's also mm-hmm. you know guys got to start leaking back before. Yeah, the guy who doesn't get the pass has to has to start yes. making his way back a little yeah. bit. Yes, that was one of the that was one of the things that happened. Josh Green shot a corner three from the the right corner to in the in the uh, final two minutes of the second quarter, and then he he, I don't think he got fouled, but he ends up on his back. And the shot was so short that it ricocheted off the side of the rim down. Yeah, I remember and I mean, that's as bad as a turnover. Those two yeah. things together. Like when you miss corner threes horribly, it is as bad as a live ball turnover. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's an ignition to a fast break. Um, and yeah, like I've just been like, cause I've been thinking, I'm like, why have the Mavericks been so bad about transition? Do Cause they're also usually you're a bad defensive uh, transition team because you want to pound the offensive glass. Right. The Mavericks are a bad offensive rebounding team too. So it's not like they're getting killed because guys are crashing the glass. I think it's just because this team is so reliant on three-point shooting. They've always got two guys spaced in the corner. Now, to be fair, most NBA teams have two guys spaced in the corner, but Luca's always in the paint too. And if he's not getting back, if he, you know, he, you know, if he's not getting back, that means they're 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 down three guys when they miss a three, which is tough. Um, but but yeah, it's just that was the game. They made their threes and their half court defense looked awesome in the first quarter. From second quarter to the fourth quarter, they turned the ball over. They missed their threes and they didn't have an opportunity to play half court defense and they lost the game. Well, and the the final score and really the final four minutes of the fourth quarter, what what happened when the Mavericks got down by like they they really sorry, I'm about to sneeze. 
Um, the Mavericks only got down by about six points for by the Bucks, so they're up by twenty five, and then there's essentially a thirty point swing for the Mavericks to be down by five or six in the third quarter. Yep. Obviously, you don't like a thirty point swing, but something about at that point the Mavericks are down five and they they wake up a little bit. They they find yeah. a little bit of dignity, a little bit of pride. Yeah. Um, Remember that they come back in the game. They actually retake the lead in the fourth quarter or in the third quarter, uh, only to give it up on the final shot in like six seconds left. It like, if you want to talk about bad transition defense like that, fine. it's just like, guys, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. And then they yeah. never got the lead. You know, the, the, the bucks uh, punched them in the mouth to start the fourth. They basically got up by eight, seven, seven to nine points is what I wrote in my recap. And then hung out at that point for the next six minutes of play. The Mavericks would score. They would do something with Giannis they would isolate Giannis, uh, and then he'd get a layup or a putback or Dame Lillard, who was 10 of 11 from the floor. My God. And it was good night from there. Um, yeah. Dame and Giannis combined to go 30 of 37 from the field. The one play that had me in stitches, and Luca didn't actually argue the call, but Giannis attempted a Euro step with the carryover of the ball over Lucas or Luca's head. Do you, did you see that one? I don't remember that one off the top. It was coming from the top left, and he crossed over and basically swung the ball over top of Lucas. So Lucas six foot eight. Like this, it's just it looked ridiculous. And Luca essentially fouled him in the middle. I mean, Luca didn't argue the call. He was just pissed because it like it doesn't when there a lot of Giannis's motions, and I'm glad there's probably not any Bucks fans in here. Um, and if there are high, um, a lot of what Giannis does motion wise is not particularly graceful and a lot of like asshole hooper people would say he doesn't have a bag well who the fuck cares if you can just run people over and <laughs> yeah. the way the game is officiated nowadays the way he gets angles and space on people he's just gonna score a lot he's a health like i mean he's an incredible basketball player that's not to take anything away from him he is maximizing the ability uh, that he has paired with the way that the game is called um, and it was just, that was, there were just a couple instances of the way that he is able to do things physically that simply cannot be matched. And it was, it was something to watch. Yeah. Did you see, do you remember uh, the one that sticks out to me the most is they're in transition. The bucks are Giannis has the ball. Uh, I mean, it happened repeatedly throughout the night, but there was one that just stuck out to me. It was in the second half. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and Giannis says, you know, he's rampaging down the middle of the floor on a transition opportunity. The Mavericks were actually like back. Like I think they had more guys back than the Bucks did. Um, so they actually had an adva defensive advantage for once in transition. And Maxi was back, like in the paint, like in a stance, guarding, got his hands up, like not hands up, but like he's in the defensive posture, waiting for Giannis. And Giannis just like it's like he's not even there. Like he just basically kind of dips in, doesn't like shoulder check him, just you know, goes through and uses his strength and gets an and one. And he just like Maxi starts in the paint and he's like almost near the stanchion. Like, cause Giannis just moves him, not like in an offensive foul way, just because he's so like, so damn sh like what Shaq would do to guys in the low post where guys would be guarding him on the block and then end up on the floor yep. near the camera people. And he's dunking it like that's yep. what Giannis reminds me of. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, okay, we're going to take a quick break here. If you guys are here in the stream, if you could head down and hit the like button, I'd very much appreciate it. While you're down there, consider subscribing to Pod Maverick. We do these shows. Uh, and then, I don't know, I think particularly as the season wears on, I feel good tonight. Uh, I'm going to do a secondary live show where if you would like to come talk basketball with me, uh, get out some frustration. We'll we'll hang out for a little bit and, and talk a little bit of basketball. So um, be ready for that. Uh, while you're, you know, if you're listening via a podcast and it's Saturday or Sunday, um, you know, Monday morning, consider subscribing to our show, leave us a review, be very grateful. Those who are watching on the YouTube, uh, either in the live show or later on, if you could leave a comment, really appreciate it. I read all of the comments, even the very mean ones and nothing tops YouTube like mean comments. Twitter thinks it's mean and it's just, it just doesn't have it. Um, I will be hosting a second show tonight. So those of you who regularly participate, uh, hang around because I would like to talk some ball with you. Um, and then stay tuned here for a quick uh, ad read. If you're listening on the audio show, we'll be right back. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform 
with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. The playoffs are heating up, and you can still play along for the rest of the football season on Underdog Fantasy. You may have heard of their Pick'em game, where you pick higher or lower on 2-5 to five of your favorite player stats. You'll want to check it out. It's fast, it's easy, it's fun, and you could win up to 100 times your money in one night playing it. If you haven't signed up yet, you can get in the game now by heading on over to Underdog Fantasy's app or their website, underdogfantasy.com. If you use promo code BLUEWIRE, They'll match your first deposit up to $100, and you'll be ready for the big game. Disclaimer, must be 18 plus, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783, or text Next Step to 53342. New York, call the 24-7 HOPE line at one 877 hope NY or text hope NY 467369. Okay. I don't really know what else to talk about about this game because like you go through and you look at they played seven and a half guys. Um this was a game, you yeah. know, where Jaden Hardy played eleven minutes. He was one of four from the floor. Kid yanked him pretty quick because he, I just Hardy's just gotta understand that he can't do off the dribble shit. Where he is stationary. If he catches it on the move off of receiving a pass, I'm fine with it. When he takes dribble move shots, I want to die. It's awful. Yeah, I feel like with Hardy, kid is at the place where he puts him in kind of he he has a quick hook. Like he knows he kind of knows when it's gonna be good hardy or bad hardy. Mm-hmm. And credit to him. I mean, actually, probably one of his better coaching moves tonight. Yeah. Um, to actually, hardy was bad. Right. And not, you know, not run him out there, but <sighs> Boy, have you looked at Luca's uh, minute game log? Um, it's not pretty. Yeah, in kid said in the pregame that he wanted to keep him under 40 minutes, but Luca said since he hadn't played in four days, he'd be happy playing all 48. And That's this fine, just but... goes like <laughs> that comment followed by the action is just telling me they don't have a handle on Luka Doncic, period. But also, what's the alternative? They also don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't trust Seth. He tried Jaden Hardy, didn't look good. Like when Kyrie's out, this roster just yeah, there's just, there's nothing there. I mean, you want to run? Do you want to run a, a THJ Josh Green backcourt for 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 five minutes? I don't know. Like <laughs> that's the only thing I could think of. Uh, but like the thing that I'm really concerned about is, I mean, if they don't, if Kyrie does not come back, I mean, I don't care how good a shape Luke is in. You cannot have this usage with this minute. You, with this minute load and not wear down like he's gonna wear down he's human he's not a robot i mean maybe he doesn't but like i'm just there's a part of me that's kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop with luca not and it's not luca's fault oh i mean the ankle that we were just yeah. like looking and you're like man this is just the culmination of a lot of minutes what are you gonna do yeah, yeah i just it just doesn't the game plan being you know luca needs to play 45 minutes and we're they're basically so he's played 42 minutes or more in four straight games. Uh, and the team is two and two in those four games. So they're not, you know, like not only is he playing an ungodly amount of minutes, an unsustainable amount of minutes, uh, they're, they're 500 in those four games. Like it's just, it'd be one thing if they were like four and oh or three and one, but like if they're not even winning basketball, like, I don't know. It just feels like, and I'm not saying it's it's a bad coaching thing. It's again, it's just like I don't. It just Kyrie has to start has to get back, or or things are just going to snow snowball on them really quickly. Well, then you look at the other guys that that play tonight, and when you consider how many guys are hurt, you know Grant Williams gets the start tonight. Hilariously, he is a plus thirteen, <laughs> like that. 
And but Green once, was a minus 29, which is pretty funny. And he but had once again, and yeah, because like Josh actually had a fairly interesting game. Um, 20 points, nine rebounds, three assists. I am convinced he has no idea how to pass during a fast break. Um, oh, he had some bad. Turnovers. He had he had three turnovers, and two of them had to have been on fast break, like live ball situations. And I'm just like, yeah, that's, that's cool. where his lack of experience long term, because he just he doesn't play basketball as long as some other guys. Like, really, really stands out. It's hard to get super mad at him, but like. His speed is his weapon. So if he can't utilize anything other than getting to the rim, it's like, nah. that yeah. said, he hit some clutch threes. He played a pretty good game. Hard to beat on a guy. I mean, it, no, 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 he's not. It, a- one, but, but Grant. Yes, Grant. <laughs> Grant. I don't know Williams what to say anymore. <laughs> just an atrocious basketball player. Yeah. Just, he, he makes the worst decisions at the worst times. And it's just, it's, it's, it's no, it's not funny. It's sad. I mean, he had a layup that like spun in and out. Like it's getting in the to, middle. Luca just hits him right in the hands. He has to move his hands from here to here and put the ball in the hoop and he bricks it. Yeah. I just, I'm embarrassed. And then that, that pass on the ground to Jay Crowder. He had four turnovers. He had that's four. why he didn't. That's why he only played tw- 20 or 23 minutes. For a, he was a, like, I, I've seen enough. For a low, made, yeah, for a low usage spot up guy to have four turnovers, that's like. Well, the final one was the one in the second half in the left corner where yeah. he gets a kick out and just it just <laughs> stumble bumbles around. I just, yeah, it's you know you look at what they they. I think they got to trade him. Is the is is kind of my thing because his vibes have to suck because he is not a guy who silently complains. He is me. If I were a Dallas Maverick, because I can't play basketball anymore either, he, <laughs> he, I would just be bitching and moaning and flailing, and I just it, it is is his energy's awful. And I don't yeah. know. What are you trading? What are you trading him for? Right? I don't know. He he's he's. Averaging he, six points a game in January. Like, I still think you can convince another team that his 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 some of his playoff stuff with the Celtics I, was real. I really I, do. I think you have to attach a second to him. Like I don't, I don't see how you're getting you're getting value back. He still has three more years after this one. And I know his number is not huge, but with all these owners worried about sure. like second apron stuff, like no contender is going to want that when they're trying to pinch pennies to make sure that they're not paying the the mega tax. And then why would a bad team, like, you know, a bad team will take them, but they're going to want to pick for it. Like, mm. why else would they trade for him? Like, it's just his value right now is is catastrophic. I mean, he's the new JaVale McGee right now. Like, he's just, you know, you just get this guy to a multi-year deal that you think is going to fill a specific role. And not only is he not filling that role, but he's doing things worse. Like, when, I, when he was first acquired, I tried – to, you know, I, I remember saying something like, I'm not as high on him as everyone else, but it's still a solid move because if he at least just does the things that he does in Boston, he's a, he's a useful player. Yeah, he's a rotation I remember, guy. Right. I remember people being like, well, why are you down on the move? He's he's 24 or he's 25, whatever his age is. You know, he's young. He's getting better. You know, he's going to get more opportunities. We look at all this. I was like, yeah, but like he, he's, fall, you know, a guy falling out of a rotation on, on a good playoff team at that age when he's had good playoff moments is weird. You know, there were some numbers with his, you know, defensive numbers were kind of weird last year. And then even then I was like, he's just not, he's not a dynamic, he's not the dynamic forward that everyone's asking for. And just assuming that he's just going to take that leap is just, you know, I'm just a little cautious, but now he's not even, he's not even hitting spot up through, like he's not even doing three and D stuff. And I'm just like, he has like one game out of every eight or nine where it's like, oh, okay, there's that guy. And, and it's worse. It is worse than the Dorian stuff before. I'm trying to think how to phrase this because Dorian really didn't become an NBA player until he played with Luca. Like that's fair. The second half of of the 2018 19 seasons, Luca's rookie year, the last 30 games, Dorian shot like 40 percent from three, and Dorian has made himself into an NBA player. I'm really pleased with how Dorian's career has gone about, but the Luca effect with him was real, particularly from distance. And the kind of shots that Luca gets guys, I mean, look at Derek Jones Jr. as an example. If you can get anyone with a reliable three, they're going to score points. They're going to score points, which made like 
there was this real Nick Angstad of Locked On Mavs, our friend, showed this this graph the other day. We disagree with his conclusions. Out of the the guys who play the most minutes but don't average either 10 points, five rebounds, or three assists. Grant and Josh were two of the top five. <laughs> and Dorian was one of the others. <laughs> and Dorian was the other. And <laughs> all these people have been coming at me being like, well, it's Luca having the ball for days. Nobody gets enough shots. And I'm like, guys. Let's look at other <laughs> winning teams. <laughs> Luca, could Luca by himself, and this is not hyperbole, Luca by himself generates more open threes than some teams generate. Teams. So if you can't hit shots within this offense, your value plummets. And that and that the Mavericks simply cannot find anyone that can hit open shots. Reggie was great for a year, half a year, really. Well, that's why Tim is so important, and that's why it's hard to trade him. And that's yeah. what makes, even though they want to trade him, because... I mean, his defense was atrocious tonight. I know you pointed that out, but he also he made four of eight from three, and like he was one of like like he wasn't great, but like that you have to have a guy like that on your roster if you've got a guy like Luca. Like, not trying to argue, Luca doesn't need to diversify the ball a little bit more. Like, it'd be great, but like you gotta hit, you gotta be able to, to hit. Open to be shot. clear, everyone, I see the comments in the chat. The Mavericks used the last tread available on Reggie Bullock's tires. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean he's yeah he's not. I don't even think he's playing. Like, you think he's on Houston? He's, he's yeah, he doesn't play. Um, yeah. We also have to mention. Um, you know, we talked about Grant, like quietly the the Derek Jones Jr. Um, revelation has cooled off, and he's kind of slowly uh, morphed back into the player that he was for most of his career, which is still yep. not like terrible. Like it's still totally fine for a veteran's minimum that he's paid. Like he's still not like. I wouldn't call him underperforming. Like he's right in line with what he should be doing. He's a minimum signing. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's great. A, right. But like, you know, he was averaging 12 and a half points a game in December. And there was a stretch where you're like, whoa, is he like, is something here? Did they unlock something? And then in January, like teams are like, no, not really. Like they're treating him like the player that he is. Um, he's actually not shooting terribly from three in January, 35%. He's only taking 2.8 per game. He's uh -huh. took none. Uh, he took none tonight. Took none in the Atlanta game that he last played. Um, he hasn't made, he's made one three in his last four games. And it, again, it's not because he's necessarily shooting poorly. He's just, he's going games with like one, two, three attempts. And that can muck things up because he's also, you know, what he was doing in, uh, in December, he was taking five threes, which was nice, but he was taking a lot of shots because he was taking advantage of the space and driving to the rim and scoring at the rim and mixing it up with cuts and stuff like teams, I think are starting to like, I think he's shown up a little bit more on scouting reports after that December. And I think teams are kind of more like, okay, like we're not going to let this guy, like we're going to let him shoot threes. We're not going to let him beat us up yep. and, and finish at the rim. Cause that's, that's where he will kill us. Like we're going to let him shoot. And then he's not shooting because he, <laughs> because he wants to get to the rim. He's not a shooter. So that's also quite, so you're playing, you know, Thank God Maxi woke up from the dead because otherwise you look at your forward spots past Luca and Green, Jones, Williams, and Kleba. You know, Jones didn't shoot a three. Williams was 0 for 2. You know, mm -hmm. if Maxi played a, what if if Maxi played like he played this season, they would have lost this game by like 35 points. Um, so you know, on one hand, it's a shame that they wasted the Maxi game, but on the other hand, like they're just playing these guys that are just just not, you know, it's just, there just needs to be a little bit more production. Yeah. Well, did we even talk about the maxi game? No, I'm just, yeah, so that's like, the first mention. It was crazy. Like, like, so that's the most, that first of all, that's Maxi's <laughs> first double digit point game of the year. It is the, and I just did some brief looking into this. It is the most two point field goals he's had in a game since November of 2022. Maxi does not shoot two pointers for for anybody's like point of reference. I mean, he played a heck of a game. He looked like a comfortable basketball player, and I, I he had forty seven points on the season tonight. Before <laughs> so, tonight, yes. Good God, yeah, and he scored. Yeah. yeah, he scored eight in the first three minutes. Yeah, he was great. The thing that you know, the threes are nice. You mentioned this in the recap. 
four two pointers. Um, good two pointers, <laughs> like they look good. He skied for uh, you missed it in the first quarter in the first opening minutes. He skied for an alley oop uh, with Luca and finished it with two hand, like a two hand dunk. Like when was the last time we've seen Maxi, you know, finish with a dunk in the lane um, in a pick and roll? Like it looked like he got the Kobe in, knee injection or something. There's there's overseas. something to like, hit something him though happened. with confidence though. The oh, confidence thing with him is like very few NBA level players I've ever seen on offense. Yeah, I bet I, we get like a month of fantastic play out of him now. I really do. I wouldn't be surprised. I, I, they need it. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah, they do. They need everything. And even tonight, you know, he just defensively, like there was just, yeah. I feel like everyone that played, there's a Kvet, like like some sort of catch. Like even Luca's game was great, but we mentioned, you know, defensively wasn't good. He missed eight three-pointers, nine turnovers. Like even, you know, Josh Green had a great game uh, offensively, but I thought he got absolutely crushed on screens. All night he's just he's defense. not a very good defender we we just this the idea of josh is a defensive player the idea yeah. of josh is a defensive player it's it's, it's just we're running out of time we're not time but we're just running out of things like it's just there's not there's not a lot of tape on there um so yeah it's just i'm curious we've talked a lot about the game a lot i know we've already talked for 33 minutes but there's like some apocalyptic takes brewing and people are mad at the front office and people want kid fired after this game. And I'm like, is this a game where we need to to step back and look at some bigger picture narratives or do we need to wait till they get through this Alicia stretch? Like what, what's your mood? Like, are you, oh, my are mood you is angry? We can't, they, they, do you think it's over? Like, no, what, I really don't. Like I'm not an optimist, but they've showed enough to make it interesting. And okay. where this all starts to boil over and I wrote about this. Please go read my recap at mavsmoneyball.com. I talked about it. To me, this is almost wholly bad injury luck paired with a total lack of organizational composure. I, you know, kid makes me mad because kid acts like he doesn't have anything to do with it. Like he has no control over it. Part of me gets why, because as a Hall of Fame point guard, he's sitting here saying these guys get paid to play basketball. They could afford to stop being babies. And I and I use the collective they because we've seen some some like frankly, some childish behavior from Tim Hardaway. From uh he's starting to pick up some technicals lately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why is that? Because leadership comes from the top down. And when you see Luca do it and nothing happens to Luca, why in the hell won't anybody won't everybody else do it? But then, you know, the Bucks announcers called this out tonight. And I guess I've just lived with this for so long. It, it doesn't it didn't even occur to me. And some of you guys have probably thought about this. So I apologize because this is not a new point. But when Cuban is sitting there doing the same thing, why in the hell would anyone shape up? He acts like a fan because he is a fan. And I appreciate that. But he is still a leader within the organization. And then it peters out into everything else that happens. I mean, I didn't watch the Mavs broadcast tonight, so I can't speak to this. But I got a dozen messages from non-Mavs fans, from different you know media people around the league. And they're like, is this what you listen to every game? Are they okay? And like that sort of thing, it's, it's a, it's, I called it an epidemic in my recap. Because once you start complaining, it becomes the only thing you can do. And it's an organizational thing. They all have to stop. They all need to buck up and string together a series of performances. All of them. Luca cannot carry the offense all the time. J- um, Derek Lively cannot be the only defensive player. They have to do this together. The only way out of this mess is by playing through it. And they they just don't seem to... They can't seem to be able to do it for more than a game at a time. I mean, when was the last time... I feel like a crazy person. When was the last time the Mavericks won three consecutive games? I'm gonna go look because I'm petty. <laughs> it's been it's been a hot. It was probably they won three eight, games eight to start, start the year in January. Guess who those games were? Portland, Portland, and Minnesota. Minnesota game was impressive, but those other two games were cakewalks. Yeah. Other than that, they won four games to start December, and Didn't then they, they won four the games season to four start now? the season. Yeah. There is no continuity game to game. There is not enough effort game to game. A lot of that is injuries. A lot of that is things that are completely reasonable. But every team has this excuse. 
and and you know there's i see i'm reading the comments and one person said blaming luca again somebody else says this is a coaching problem you can blame it anywhere you want i don't fucking care i just want it to stop and i want to see some good basketball consistently from a team that i know can do it they can't expect luca to be a superhero every game no they can't keep doing this 42 45 minutes but i also don't know I don't know where they go until Kyrie gets back, but yeah, the, the organizational stuff, like I'm, I'm with you. Uh, there just seems to be a boiling frustration. That's like palpable. Um, the refs were not great, but it's also at a certain point, like, I mean, nothing's going to like the refs aren't great, but, but complaining about it isn't going to take away the foul. Like they're not going to call, they're not going to take away the foul. They're not going to take away your technical. Maybe they call the game a little bit differently, but, but I mean, we've seen this repeatedly. This felt kind of like the Phoenix game a little bit where when the adversity struck, it just kind of snowballed down. And I understand that maybe that's because they're frustrated because they felt like they haven't had their full team on the floor for a long time, which is true. They basically haven't played their five best guys together more than like 50 possessions or whatever it is. So I get it. They're frustrated and, everyone's right like it just i don't know like that's why i said this game sort of felt like those two charlotte games because it feels like guys are just kind of letting go of the rope they're letting go of their competitiveness a little bit because you don't get that like one one of the outside stuff yeah Mm -hmm. yeah like and and i understand people want to fire the coach and and i get it and i'm not a kid fan but i'm trying to think of like like firing kid is not going to make Kyrie play 80% of the, the games that are remaining or 90% or whatever they need. Uh-huh. It's not going to make Derek, Li- uh, Derek Lively's nose go from broken to unbroken. Like that's not to give kid an excuse. Like I think he's, there's some things that he's been doing this season that are, that are really bad, but I'm just saying like, I don't know. I think if they want to make a coaching change, I would just wait till the offs. Like I just don't see the benefit of, bringing in someone new or, or, or elevating a new voice. Like maybe you get that bump where you win like two or three or four games in a row, or you go like five and one. Cause everyone's kind of pepped up by a new coaching change, but like that stuff catches up to you a little bit and, and trying to implement new stuff in mid season. I, I don't know. Like maybe it's going to get to a point where they can't get escape it. And they feel like that's the only change that they could make. And we have to see what the trade deadline brings. Cause that's what usually the mid season coaching changes. Something happens, they can't, you know, they feel like this is the only thing that they can do. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. But I just, I don't know what that's going to change right now. But when they get to the summer, I'm totally like, they do need to evaluate like all of this leadership stuff right now because it stinks. Um, it stinks that, you know, they get some bad calls. Like it felt like when the Giannis kick call went against them, like everything just kind of fell apart from there. Like, yeah. I think credit to them for maybe finishing that third quarter strong. But again, they had already lost the 25 point lead, but like they shouldn't have even been in that position to begin with. No. Um, now you could say they shouldn't have had a 25 point lead to begin with, considering the, the odds were, were stacked against them. But you play the, you know, that's not what happened. Like they, they got a 25 point lead. Like you can't, you can't come away from this game being like, this isn't that big deal of a loss because they should have lost this game anyway. Like, no, like things change. Like you have new information. And your opinion should change. Like they had a 25 point lead. They should have been able to close the game out. Uh, they should have at least been able to make it a clutch game. Down. Like this wasn't even a clutch game. Like the, nope. you, uh, how many teams have a 25 point lead lose and it's not even goes down in the, in the record books as a clutch game. Like it was, it was a bad second through, through fourth quarter. And, and the way it just kind of the air got let out of the balloon, it felt like the Phoenix game and the Phoenix game also had really bad vibes around. Yeah. Well, you, you said something that I thought was important and made me think of something that I didn't really close on. If you're going to complain about the referees, if that's going to be a thing, okay, and that can just happen some games, at a certain point, there needs to be a sell decision point to where you're really making the point you want to make as a player, as a coach. If it's Luca and you're really that pissed about how you've been treated, Get ejected over a real call. Part of why I don't think he does is because I think he, he he knows that in his heart of hearts, some of the things that he argues aren't worth aren't worth the the things that he's mad about. Kid though, 
kid could, you know, kid doesn't do that. Like kid doesn't get technicals. And he's only been injected like twice since he's been in Dallas. I think with the, with the kind of fragility, this team is displaying that kind of gesture would, would might work. You know, Carl did it every now, great now and again. I, it's not like we as fans all feel like kid isn't sticking up for his players. I wonder if the players feel that way. I don't know because kid no. and Hardaway and Luca, and there's a lot of weirdness. You know, we never even touched on the fact that kid went on the radio after the last game and said that Luca is better than Dirk and could be one of the best players of all time, which felt like such unbelievable pandering <laughs> that we didn't even talk about it because our site just looks at some of this stuff and just rolls our eyes. Like I, I don't, you know, we don't do fan speculation that much or uh, trade speculation. And sometimes we don't really talk about these, these kind of like click clicky stories. Cause it just annoys me as an editor. And I, I don't know. I, I, I just, it has to start somewhere and, you know, Luca can get up and give his normal platitude, which is, I got to be better. I got to do this. I got to do that. And I appreciate that when he does it, there's just, there's something's got to change, you know, something's yeah. got to change. Yeah. I don't, I don't really disagree. I, I don't um, know what it will be because I think it's just so injury dependent. And I think yeah. everything we've talked about tonight but, and really for the past several games, Grant Williams shooting, Derek Jones shooting. If all those guys are bumped down the peg, and have less stress on them, maybe they play better. Yeah, but I mean, like Derek Jones has to still play. Like they still have to play. Like I know if they get pegged, you know, down a peg, that helps. But I don't know how much it helps. I, there's probably something that's uh, that I've been thinking about. Like it feels like we've been talking for like two years, maybe even longer now. It feels like it's just been this constant. Well, when the condi- the condition when the conditions are right, like w- when this happens and this happens, then they're going to take off, or or this is going to be better. You know, when they get healthy, you know, when Kyrie and Luca get more time together, you know, yeah. like when they gel, when they made before the Kyrie trade, it was like, okay, well, they just need to make the big trade. They need, you know, there's been a little. It feels like the wheels are spinning, and the, they're just not going. In. Like it feels like they're stuck in the mud these last two years. Like the wheels are spinning in the mud and they're just not going forward. They're not necessarily going backward. I mean, they kind of, they did last year for sure, but uh, it's just like, they're just in this constant cycle of, well, let's just wait till this thing happens and then things will be better. And at a certain point, how many times can you say that before you realize, well, now the season's over, we can't wait for things to get better. Um, Not trying to, to end the podcast on like a downer note, but like, this might just be a year where they're not healthy. That happens to teams, you know. Shout like, out to Casey yeah. Smith, wherever he is. <laughs> they're not even the most injured team in the NBA, by the way. Not even close. So, you yeah. know, and of course, all those teams I think ahead of them are like really bad, like Memphis and maybe a couple other teams. So, you know, it, it's it feels like they're kind of on a treadmill right now. Like they're just it's just always, it's just always one more thing. And like, you, you're just waiting for the moment where they're like, okay, we are shorthanded and we are not being dealt a great, a great hand here, but F it. Let's, let's take three out of four. Let's, you know, let's turn this around. Let's, you know, let's rally behind something. Like there's just something off that's that, that needs to change. And I can't, I can't pinpoint it. I can't quantify it. I can't statistically you know, highlight what that is. It, there just feels like they're just stalled. Like they're stuck in neutral uh, for like the last two years. And, <laughs> and I don't, I don't know what that, what this that is means. Mara, one of our long yeah. time commenters says, Oh my, the dreaded treadmill of mediocrity. Oh, right. Fuck. Good, good line, man. Good line. All right, Josh, I'm going to let you go edit and do some other yep. stuff. I'm going to take a minute long break and then we're going to be back with our second live show. Uh, for anybody who wants to hang out, please do. I'm going to be posting a link here in the chat, which I want you to come up and join the show. For those on listening on audio, Mavs Party, if I don't split it into two shows, the second will be on Sunday afternoon. Uh, everybody, thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, please give me just a second. I need to go make another drink, and I will be right <laughs> back to talk a little bit. You guys have fun you guys. tonight. <laughs> go Mavs.